Hello people, welcome to BTEC. David here and today I want to talk about one of Samsung's more affordable phones, the Galaxy A6. Samsung will want just £250 for this phone, so my expectations for this one weren't that high at first. But so far I'm finding it very hard to fault this phone and it's got a few interesting features that sweeten the deal even more. If you want a phone that won't cost the earth to buy outright but still want it to perform, then Samsung would probably be a good bet, but can the A6 deliver? Before we get into it, I want to give a shout to our sponsors Direct Mobiles. They have a great selection of phones at excellent prices, whether you want a good contract deal or you want to buy outright. They also have 23 years of award winning customer service, so you're in good hands. Check the description below for a link to their website or search directmobiles.co.uk. So the Galaxy A6, yeah it's a nice modern looking and feeling handset with better than average features, which I will get into in a bit, but let's start with the design. We all know Samsung do screens properly, and that remains true even at the lower end. The A6 has a great 5.6 inch Super AMOLED Infinity display with an 18.5 by 9 aspect ratio and a modest 720 by 1480 resolution. The screen has a pixel density of 294 ppi, so a fair bit lower than the specs of the more pricey Samsung, but it really doesn't seem to matter at all. The screen is bright and crisp with punchy colours. You get a slightly curved 2.5D glass covering protecting the display, not the Corning Gorilla Glass like the more expensive options, so I would recommend to get a case on it as soon as you can. There is a strong blue colour shift when viewing the screen from an angle, something that is associated with the cheaper OLED panels. My only other criticism here is that I wish the screen had the rounded edges like the A8. Continuing on the front, there is a 16 megapixel camera with a nice and fast f1.9 lens which displays a full frame equivalent view of 26mm. We also get an adjustable LED flash for very decent selfies in low light. It's an all metal handset apart from the camera and fingerprint sensor unit which is made from glass and I find this part on all Samsung phones to be very easy to scratch. Mine has a small mark on it already but the rest of the device is much more hard wearing. It's a generic part but it would have been nice to have it match the rest of the phone. I think it would have looked better too and mine wouldn't be scratched. It has a rugged look with those prominent antenna lines and a nice matte textured finish which doesn't show the fingerprints much at all. The rear camera has a 16 megapixel sensor with phase detection autofocus and an f1.7 lens. We get an LED flash and it has a full frame equivalent view of 26 millimeters. There's nothing on the top, just smooth metal and underneath it has the older style micro USB 2.0 connector and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. The right side has the volume buttons and two removable trays for the microSD card and for the SIM, allowing this phone to carry dual SIMs and a microSD card simultaneously. MicroSD expansion is supported up to 256GB. On the left side there is the power button and a single fire inside speaker. I appreciate a good loudspeaker as I use it a lot. I don't think it sounds too bad, I was expecting it to sound much worse, but I would say it's about as good as the speaker on the A8. For a cheaper phone I can't complain. It runs Android Oreo 8.0 and a Samsung Experience UI and it has that typically clean and snappy Samsung feel to it. This particular phone has 32GB of onboard storage and 3GB of RAM and it's powered by a 3000mAh battery, which I'm finding can get the A6 nicely through the day. We have Samsung's Octa-Core Exynos 7870 chipset and I have no real complaints with the performance. Things do move a little bit slower than you see on the higher spec models. Things like face recognition and the fingerprint scanner take a little bit longer to activate and sometimes the apps can take a little bit longer to load, but it's by no means what I would call slow. If you're downgrading from a 2018 flagship, you would notice a difference, but if you're upgrading from an older phone, you'll have no problems with the speed. Camera performance is very good from both the front and rear 16 megapixel cameras. Samsung's image processing software has always been very good, and the latest algorithms seem to do an excellent job of delivering a good shot. There's no stabilization though, neither optical or electronic, and portrait shots are only possible with the selfie camera but the quality of the front camera is just as good as the rear camera, both producing nice tone and colours as well as good sharpness in favourable conditions. One slightly annoying thing about the app is that the HDR is a separate shooting mode and cannot be used automatically, but it does do a good job of preserving the detail in the high contrast scenes and it's good to see it there. The Pro mode does not give you control of all of the camera functions, only white balance, ISO and exposure compensation are available to be tweaked. Personally, I prefer to just shoot in the HDR mode, as I found that it was getting me better results. Other shooting modes are panorama, continuous shot, night mode, which is more useful with a tripod, 
sports mode, which optimizes settings for fast moving subjects, and sound and shot. This gives the option to record up to 12 seconds of sound either before or after you take the picture, allowing you to then play back that sound when viewing the picture. I think it's a neat little trick. The Galaxy A6 records 1080p video at up to 30 frames per second for both the front and rear cameras. And it also has the option to record in the 18.5 by 9 aspect ratio. No EIS as I mentioned before. It would have been nice to see it in here though, as the Full HD video is not bad at all. Audio quality through the headphone jack is okay. It's not terrible, I've definitely heard worse, but I prefer to use Bluetooth anyway. Dolby Atmos is available when listening through the headphones, and there is a function to find the perfect sound by testing your hearing to give you a custom sound profile. This works pretty well, although the earphones supplied with the A6 don't do the effect much justice. It's definitely worth getting yourself a decent pair. Overall, I like the Samsung Galaxy A6. I think there's a lot to be said about phones with an all metal design. It makes them much more suited to everyday life. That said, this isn't a rugged phone. With a lack of Gorilla Glass on the front and no IP rating, you want to be careful with it. But it gives you a nice up-to-date feature set, good sound and excellent pictures. The OLED 18x9 screen and Samsung's excellent UI make this feel very modern and a pleasure to use. If you like Samsung's style and their user interface and you don't want to spend any more than this, then yeah, this is a good choice. But if you've got a little bit more cash and are not stuck on Samsung, then I would recommend something else. Something like a Nokia 7 Plus or an Honor 10 or even an Honor 9 would be a much better choice. So anyway, that's it from me. Thanks for watching my review of the Samsung Galaxy A6. Stay tuned to BTEX as we'll be heading out to IFA in Berlin this week to bring you all the latest news and tech from Europe's biggest consumer electronics show. I've got some idea of what we'll be seeing, but I think we might have a few surprises out there too. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want more, hit the subscribe and the notification bell to get all the latest BTEC videos as they come in. I'm David Wildman and this was BTEC.